Hello there girls and boys, welcome back to the Inner Sanctum, the place where I show you all of my tricks, where I pull them off live right in front of you. And I know, it's been a while, but we finally managed to come back to you live, and I gotta tell you, you're gonna be extremely impressed with the quality of this broadcast. Am I right, Thiago? Um, you might be right. Okay. I don't know, let's see. Okay, hopefully <laughs> this thing should work. And uh, this is the beginning of uh, an amazing journey. I expect it to be like that because we're going to be not only mixing a new track, but also uh, the way that we're going to be mixing it and the way that we are going to be showing you the, the whole process is going to be much more interactive and better, hopefully. So now getting into, into what we're going to be dealing with. Today we're going to be mixing, as the title implies, a kind of quasi-electronic song. And we're going to be doing it again on Logic Pro X, my preferred weapon of choice. And if this track is actually a quite, quite uh, short uh, track. It's, we're dealing with one minute uh, of length. And uh, the track itself is comprised of a very, very, very uh, small uh, track count. So if you're ready, let's get into it now. So, girls and boys, welcome back to the usual suspect, Logic Pro X. What you got in front of you is the project that we're going to be using to mix this track. But before we even press play, let me give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be dealing with. Right now, we got our uh, output uh, channel, which it's already loaded with our trusty adapter AV. If you're familiar with this plugin, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great way for you to have a monitor or to have a reference track, which we already loaded a reference track, which in this case is the rough mix of this track. It's going to allow us to confirm that what we're doing, it's actually adding some form of improvement or not by comparing it. And the beauty of this uh, plugin is that just by pressing this button, we can switch between the original track, which is the blue, uh, when you get the blue balls, <laughs> and uh, the orange one, which stands for the, any, any of the tracks that we have as a reference. Right now, we're going to be listening to the reference track. Why? Because if you take a closer look at my mixer, Jesus Morphe, it failed, <laughs> not a problem. Oh, yeah, give me a second. Wrong keyboard. There it is. Perfect. There Sorry go. about that. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it, Tiago? It does. So, live. Yeah, it's live. This is the confirmation that we are live. <laughs> what we're going to be doing here, and you might be noticing at this very moment, is that all of my, uh, and I usually forget to open this up. This is actually part of the tradition. We're going to be dealing with this. This is actually my plethora of tracks, and you can see that every single fader is all the way down. Why? It's because when I start any mix, I like to begin with anything with everything, sorry, at zero, uh, that means no sound, not zero, a unit again, as a way to get me used to the track. And this is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to come back to my original screen, and in here, we're going to press play, and we're going to be listening only to our adapter metric AV uh, reference track. And as the track goes on, I'm going to be dropping markers. More on that later. So here we go. Here is going to be the first attempt at listening to this track. Here we go.
So, we got it. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth did I have to play the whole track and leave markers? That's a great question. I'm glad that you didn't ask. First and foremost, it's a great practice for you to get used to the track before even mess, uh, even you start to mess around with the faders. Because that way you have an idea of what kind of uh, moments you will be expecting. And why is that so important? If you look at my Logic Pro screen, you can see that now I am able to move the playhead as I see fit just by the press of a button. That's super cool because now, now if I want to tackle a particular section of the track by pressing the button, I will take my playhead exactly where I want it to be. That's really, really important. Also, now that you can take a look at this as well, you can see this section, okay? This, this uh, tiny like uh, here, this uh, different uh, uh, shade of gray uh, on top of my marker. This is the section that as soon as I press my cycle um, button, it's gonna be selected to cycle, which means looping, one back and forth, okay? That's because that way you can focus on a particular section of the track. And also by leaving markers, you see that the cycling follows the length of each given marker. Really, really cool. So now that we got this, we're gonna come back to adapter metric AB and we're gonna now switch back to our proper mix. This means that as soon as I press play, you won't be able to hear anything because now we're gonna be hitting the faders and hopefully you should be able to hit the faders and I'm gonna come back to our fader screen as well. Introducing the stunning and brave solid state logic UF8 and UC1. Those are my weapons of choice when it comes to mixing. And if you want to know more about it, I got a video somewhere on the screen once this uh, live stream is finished, so you can have an idea of what I think about these pieces of gear. And I can tell you by right now that they are awesome. So it's time to hear some music. I've been I've been talking for way too long. So again, we're gonna be dealing with this this section. Okay. So here we go. Pressing play. This is gonna be important, person, so I have to go bigger. You'll see. I always like to begin with the uh, with the drums. Why? The drums are the foundation, rhythmic foundation of any track. And if you uh, start to set the gain stage, which stands for the level between every single one of the elements that are conforms a track. If you begin with the most important one, let's say in this track, our electric guitar solo we will be setting the stage, pun totally intended, uh, in a way that will push us, again, totally intended, to push our faders all the way up in, a, in an attempt to match up with what we got at the uh, 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 when it comes to reference level of our main instrument. So my recommendation, and this is actually good practice uh, every time that you're mixing music, always begin with everything down and start to add drums first and then the rest. And you will see that my main focus at this point will be to match and find the right uh, combination of uh, volume when it comes to the different sections of my drum kit. So I'm gonna come back to Logic and I wanna make sure that we are on the right uh, spot. And this is gonna be important, Gore Symbols. Again, look, talking about the markers, you'll see that this section over here is where most of the action happens. Not only when it concerns to the, to the, to the, to the kick drum, or the kick drum, the, the drums, we also got the interaction of not only our kick drum and the rest of the stuff conforming the drums, but also our guitars and synthesizers. So I'm going to move my playhead by pressing the markers and I'm going to set my cycling region to be exactly marker number four, which is where most of the action happens. I'm going to come back to my mixer again and we're going to lower the volume of everything again. Okay. And from here, we're going to start to bring up the different elements of my drum kit and then I'm going to start to add bass to taste. Here we go.
Okay, now, <laughs> something weird happened. And Tiago would be the first one to look at me with a rat. I am mixing, uh, using the concept of a drummer's perspective. That means that I have to position my uh, cymbals and my thumbs and my snare something closer to what would be if I was doing the air drums, okay? Mm. Yeah. And Tiago, you saw what happened with my crash on my right, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, they didn't really feel like they were coming from a natural source yes. to a degree. Like they felt, of course, the sound is electronic, so yes. it feels electronic, but it felt electronic not only in the sound, it felt electronic in the uh, delivery of the sound. Yes. You know? <laughs> but here is a big question. Do you truly believe that that's the only way to uh, 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 spread your drums on a stereo field? Actually, there is a second way to mix music, and it, it's called audience perspective, All which right. it's flipping the the positioning of your of your uh, 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 drum tracks. If I was looking at you while oh. performing, okay, which one do I prefer? I to be quite to be quite mm. honest, probably because I am a musician. I prefer to have the drummer's perspective, and okay. you, you you feel the same, but especially, but, especially you. But I suppose it actually uh, impacts the, the overall feel of the song 100%. as well. So how would you say, like, from an audience perspective, yes. you get impacted by the two different approaches? Yeah, I think it's um, that's an actual question that I never thought about. <laughs> okay. But let me try to let me try to uh, organize my thoughts. Mm. I think that when you mix music, uh, if wherever you do here doesn't translate emotionally speaking. Uh, to something closer to what the artist intent was, yeah. you're failing. And secondly, let's say that you manage to, to, to convince the artist that it's, it's working. If the audience doesn't react yeah. acco in accord to what the intent of the artist was, yeah. it's a failure. So sometimes some mixers uh, prefer to do the audience um, perspective over the drummer's perspective. Mm. But I think it's much more uh, a, uh, uh, a matter of choice. Okay. It comes to taste. To be quite frank, probably because my musician background, yep. my background forced me to do it in a way that makes sense to me, musically speaking. Okay. But cool. uh, for each his own, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so now, the next step is going to be adding our bass. So uh, taking a look at the faders, this is my fader that is controlling the bass. And I'm going to press play again. And I want you to pay extreme attention to the, the relationship between my kick and my bass. And I might be soloing them together, okay? Here we go. Okay, there are many things that I want to explain to you, Girls and Boys. We got, as we found the sweet spot volume wise. And I want you to pay attention once I press play again and look for the moment in which you feel that it hits you. Okay? Don't look for uh, the volume and the clarity of the notes being played by both instruments. I want you to pay attention to how it feels. It's extremely hard and you won't believe how many years I spent trying to come up with this very principle that I'm sharing with you girls and boys. It took years for me to understand how to know when I put my balance between my bass and my kick in a correct manner. And this is the very foundation of your track. If you don't do this correctly, no matter how good you are with the rest, your mix highly likely will suck. Monkey uh, stuff. stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to press play again. But there is something else. I want you to tell me if you like or not the sound of the kick. Because to be quite frank, it doesn't belong to my taste. Once again, here we go. With everything, and then I'm going to bring just, I'm going to solo the bass and the kick. Here we go. Okay, 
while we were listening to the track, I was showing Tiago what to look for. You could feel it, right? Yeah, there completely. is a point. There is a point on which both instruments hit together, and actually, there's nothing uh, happening. Yeah. Not mm, sonically speaking, it, you feel it. Yeah, it, it moves you. Yes. And that actually, that the lower frictions have that power to actually exactly. make you feel it in your exactly. core. Totally. But here is something that I also told Thiago. I don't like that much the sound of the kick because the sample that I use for this uh, track, not necessarily speaking, makes sense with the bass. Again, mm. girls and boys, there is no such a thing as a rule when it comes to music production especially when it comes to taste. But uh, to me, it feels a little bit off. I am looking for something a little bit uh, deeper, uh, more uh, closer to what an 808 will sound like. Mm. So let's go back to Logic again, and we're gonna use our first plugin. Here we go, girls and boys. Actually, this is gonna be coming from the, fi from the fine people at Slate Digital. This is called Slate Digital Trigger. One of my favorite uh, sound replacement, if not my favorite sound replacement tool in the world and what it does it's the following right now you got here let me just confirm that my face is not getting in the way this area is going to be showing you the moments on which the sound coming into the plugin will be triggering not the feminist but the <laughs> but the, the 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 sample that you loaded inside of your uh, inside of your plugin now since we are dealing with that a sample recording, you will see, as I zoom in, that we basically got just the kick. So we won't have to be concerned about the uh, missed triggers by uh, the bleeding of the snare coming into our uh, kick drum microphone. Cool. So here we go. We're going to first open our browser inside of Trigger and we're going to look for a kick drum. Here we go. I'm going to look for kicks. And um, um, as you can see, we got plenty of different options. But you know what, girls and boys? Uh, those are most of them are, are real kicks. So let's do something different. We're gonna... Uh, let me think, let me think. Okay, got it. We're gonna select a kick drum and then there is something else going on. Wait for it. Let's take a look at this kick number four. And to be quite frank, I'm just randomly selecting it. Let's see how it fares. Coming back to triggering, and we're gonna solo our kick as well. It's now solo, and let's free play. Okay, what you saw me doing with the mix knob is what a mix knob will do. When it's 100%, is 100% the sound of the sample, and when it's 0%, it's the original source. And you can blend it together. But there are many things that this, uh, this plugin allows you to do. We have access to this section, girls and boys, and as you can see, I am. Um, uh, this is the channel strip. Well, quite similar to the to Logic's channel strips, and in here we got two different options. We got pan, which for a kick drum would be quite stupid, but tune, which in this case will be quite quite effective, and also the output level of uh, that particular sample. And as you can see, you can load as as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different samples at the same time to trigger, to be triggered by your kick. Awesome. That's why you got the faders, because that way you can control the volume of each individual uh, different uh, sample. Now, I think we got something uh, better already. So I'm going to bring the bass and I'm going to increase the volume of my output. Why? Because it was lower in output uh, when compared to the original uh, sample. I'm going to press play again and I'm going to mess around with my tuning knob. We are getting some form of mystery in, uh, in one section. Let me confirm why do we got that. I'm going to press play again and see what happens. Got it. It's somewhere here. This guy is over here. So let's see first how it sounds like we tell the plugin. Okay. So we're expecting, we're looking for that boom. boom. And we're going to Okay, that was better. This might be happening because I am I have a retriggering uh, quite quite fast. Okay, that was better. Let's give it a shot once again from the top with the rest of the instrumentation. Here we go.
Okay, we got it. But it still is not fat enough. So we're gonna add a second plugin, girls and boys. And we're gonna be looking for something that I actually been falling in love as of late. We're looking for, let me find, let me just remember where I put it. Here it is. Base Mint. Awesome, 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 all around base related plugin. There is a video somewhere on the screen once this uh, live stream is finished on which I explore everything that this thing has to offer and you won't believe how awesome it is. Not gonna spend time explaining how it works or some boys because that's the reason why we got that video. But I want you to pay attention to how much this will change the sound of our kick. I'm gonna solo the kick again and we're gonna start, start to mess around with it. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, something tight. Quite different, right? <laughs> yeah. Let me explain what this uh, this plugin does. This plugin does many things, but uh, uh, in a nutshell, it allows you to alter the low end frequencies of any given source. And it has different algorithms, and the one that I'm using right now is called Synthetize, which is adding a sine wave mm -hmm. uh, following the the frequency that I set uh, in, the, in the plugin. Cool. And it's adding that extra layer of depth to our sound uh, by adding this sine wave, which is quite, quite cool. All right, cool. It's really, really awesome. Now, let's bring the rest of the instrumentation now that we got something cool. And to be quite frank, I am still not 100% uh, convinced with my sound, but that's part of the charm of this uh, whole uh, music uh, production and mixing uh, uh, environment, because you are always prone to come up with better ideas as you keep going because you can get inspired. So let's go back to our mixer and now we're going to bring the rest of the instruments. So please pay attention to this section of the mixer, girls and boys, and you'll have access to that as well on the uh, on the hands-on section of the of the video, okay? So we're going to be adding the guitars and our uh, synthesizers. Here we go. Okay, there is something important here. We got a ridiculously highly dynamic piano here, and uh, we will need to apply some compression. Secondly, we got the cello, which is kind of a synthesizer. Uh, it's more like a pad, but it's close to a cello as well. So I think I think I used a sample of a cello from one of our previous records to create this sound. Don't remember? So I'm gonna try to come back to you once I remember. A certain uh, Jens Hack. So, uh, uh, political jokes aside. Uh, I'm gonna uh, bring the lead guitar, and you will me. You might be wondering why on earth did I decide to use the lead guitar as the final uh, element to bring on? That's a great question, and I'm glad that you didn't ask. Here is the reason why, girls and boys. The way that I like to approach music production uh, and especially mixing is by first laying down a, a super strong foundation, like if you were building a castle, for example, for your princess. Okay. And uh, I like to make sure that everything that it comes after it, it's gonna uh, find a place, uh, a beautiful place to live <laughs> in. <laughs> okay, I know that was stupid, <laughs> but uh, I think that kind of make makes my point. Point. Yeah. But also, it's important because since we are leaving our lead element, which in this case is lead guitar, 
by having it to be the final element of our uh, game stage, it means that we will be sure sure that we, as soon as we start to push the fader, we're going to find a spot that makes sense with the rest. Because that's mm. how you actually listen to music, don't you think, Thiago? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, like, um, the guitars themselves, actually, oh, I was meaning to, to make a comment here. Go ahead. Love the tone of the guitars. Awesome, right? They sound <laughs> dreamy. Yeah. yeah they, they, they feel cozy. I feel like a fireplace uh, by, by my side. So, actually, yeah. Yeah, and actually, that's important, girls and boys, because that's called uh, emo that's uh, called prosodia. If you are speaking Italian, All and right. <laughs> it means it means um, uh, the correlation in between the sound and the emotional impact. So it's important, and that applies. Actually, that comes from lyrics. When you write lyrics, you're supposed to embody some form of emotion by uh, through the use of your word and also through your singing. If your singing doesn't correlate emotionally speaking with your word with your lyrics. Uh, yeah, you suck. You 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 are you are uh, you are Nicky Nash. So <laughs> yeah, and speaking of the guitar, let me show you the guitar that I used. Now that we have access to this, okay. Look at this, eh? Production band. <laughs> so I care. <laughs> so I almost killed myself. This is the guitar that I used for this uh, particular sound. Uh, this is uh, Yamaha uh, Super Rock and Roller uh, 700, and it's coming. It, it's taking us back to the beginnings of the dark age of technology or some reason. It's mm -hmm. from the late 70s. And it sounds awesome, it and is. it's loaded with beautiful uh, Fender, vintage, whatever, uh, pickups. Stuff. Awesome, awesome. And it plays like a drink, so it's awesome. So. Cool stuff. Cool stuff, right? Yeah. So, we're coming back to this, and we're going to add the final element to our uh, song, which is our lead guitar, and then we're going to start to compare to the, um, to the reference track. So here we go, again, from where we were beginning. Take that, David Gilmore. <laughs> no, sorry, but that guitar sounds incredible, and I like I like the tone that I got out of that of this recording. I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to remember what the hell uh, did I did with it, and also trying to remember which amplifier I used <laughs> because uh, this is actually awesome. And uh, now we got a point on which we will remove our cycling. Let me go back to our uh, arrangement window, and we're gonna play the track from the top. But there is something that probably you notice it. Uh, the lead guitar is extremely um, dynamic in range, which means that there are points on which the guitar is going to be extremely low in volume because it's um, a, an Stratocaster style of guitar, like a, a single coil. And uh, I didn't use, if, uh, I used some form of uh, compression, that's for sure, but it was gentle. Uh, still, uh, part of what makes a good guitar rig uh, amazing is how responsive it is to your playing. And it enhances you. And actually, Tiago and myself were having this discussion a few days ago yeah. on how important it is because you feel the difference, right, Tiago? Definitely, definitely. Man. 100%. Yeah. And it translates into a better performance. So I'm going to press play again. So I can assure you that the very beginning here is going to be almost inaudible, the guitar, because of this. But once we reach the section, it gets louder because I am hitting the strings even harder. But uh, we will have to address this through the use of the dark arts of automation, something that I kind of despise, but it's extremely important. So here we go, from the top. And actually, just remember that we haven't added this section, <laughs> our sound effects. <laughs> but it's just a tiny, a tiny, a tiny uh, track that we're all going to add as we go. We'll here we go, girls and boys, from the top. And before we continue, I forgot to remember to open Adapter AB. And remember, Blue stands for our current mix, orange stands for our rough. Here we go.
you saw that we were discussing and actually yeah. it's because you saw me as well doing something to my uh, to base mint the, the the plugin that we were using on our kick drum i did it because thanks to the fact that we have access to our reference track i discovered that the kick drum on the reference was a little bit louder and also yeah. i saw that it was a little bit too scooped in the midst mm. part of what the plugin does is it, it has some shaping capabilities yeah and um once I realized that, I came back to my kick drum. You saw me doing this, coming back to here and opening up, um, where, where is it? Unfiltered audio. And we, we managed to change it by lowering the strength of the sine wave being added and also by pushing it to a much more lower frequency. That yep. way we gave weight to our kick drum. So now that you experience the power of a reference track, Diego, what do you <laughs> think about him? I think actually what you achieved there, especially comparing the bold, bold tracks, was quite cool because I think n now the, the bass drum actually uh, makes sense within the overall feel of the song because exactly. the song feels cozy, feels kind of chill. Yeah. So it's not supposed to have a super yeah. powerful and kicking you in the face bass yes. drum. So the bass drum now feels kind of rounded yeah. and powerful enough, but within the, the concept of the song. Totally. And actually what I was mentioning is important because the original uh, sample used, I think it sounds more like something out of the Beatles record, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Which, which is awesome. Because it didn't sound bad, but it was it didn't really fit the, total, the overall atmosphere total, of the song. Total, total, total. So now that we got these girls and boys, we're gonna do something even crazier. As I as I just remember, before we do something crazy, let's fix the missing <laughs> failure. Here we go, girls and boys. We're gonna just add the, the effects. I don't even know what it does, so I'm going to solo them and then we're going to see how to put them in. Okay, it's the, it's the traditional uh, EDM riser. So mm. we're going to press play again and we're going to start to add it up to taste. So, and uh, Thiago, I'm going to switch to my uh, mixer, okay? All right. Because I want you to see how I approach to this. And usually I do it uh, little by little and then I try to find the sweet spot. Here we go. Cool. There's something important, girls and boys. This uh, sound effect should uh, correspond to our cra crash. The crash is actually the ending of this riser. So I'm gonna increase the volume of my crash because I feel that I put my sound effect in a sweet spot. Once again, here we go. Almost there. I think the crash can go a little bit higher because it's supposed to be palo. So again, here we go. Mm, yeah, that was good. So that's that's why it's so important for you to be conscious and always approach to everything uh, as softly as possible. Because if I want nuts the chances of it failing were it was high. Uh, now, we're gonna come back to our uh, arrangement window and we're gonna remove, of course, our cycling because we're gonna do the following, girls and boys. I'm gonna take you to the darkest of paths, a place where most people have passed away and a place where real men achieve the title of real manhood. This is known as the stereo bus. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. Why do, the, uh, did I have to give this uh, stupidly big um, and over grandiose um, introductions to show such a concept? Is because most people leave this at the end, and if they are lucky, they even leave it at the end. Actually, most people don't even understand why it's so important to uh, tackle your uh, stereo boss. That means that every single thing that we do after our, our after wars, after we fix we we set our stereo bus uh, setup is going to be impacted by that very setup because everything is being fed to that stereo bus. Hopefully that made sense. But I am already thinking on, on making a video explaining this very concept in a much more deeper and, and easy to understand fashion. Okay. Given the nature of a live stream, it's kind of difficult to explain everything. But you get the gist. Yep. So what we're going to do is the following or somewhere. You thought that there is nothing going on on my stereo bus. Well, you are wrong. 
I got from the very beginning a limiter inserted. This guy over here by the fun people at Brainworks. This is VX limiter through peak. It's a really cool beast, and I'm not gonna spend time explaining how it works for now. But it's awesome. I like it because it's extremely tra transparent, in, and I use it to keep my transients in check. It's barely doing anything. It's just to keep my mix from from clipping. Does is it? Don't know. And you can see here that we got an extra plugin that it's disabled. This I/O stands for my rack. Actually, I use uh, analog gear while mixing, but since I am working on an album, I won't be able to use this rack at the moment because uh, I don't want to mess a, a month of work. Okay. So we're gonna remove that guy. See you, wanna see ya? And then we're gonna insert our first element in our chain. It's gonna be a bit of saturation, girls and boys. And we're gonna do it by looking for distortion, of course. And um, um, we're gonna use this guy, the black box, because it reminds me of the darkness of my heart. That was wow. awful, that was <laughs> awful, man. That was awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> here we go, girls and boys, and again, for this uh, matter, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put my cycling um, uh, region to be right where most of the action happens or somewhere. This section over here. Jesus Christ! Again, sorry about that, but this was the, I, I just stuck, I got stuck with the stand. I'm gonna play again, but we're gonna be messing around with our uh, black box. What it does, outside of making you afraid, <laughs> it's actually adding some saturation. And you can switch between the different uh, uh, the different profiles of the saturation uh, by applying a little bit of uh, a little bit more of a, a saturated track a signal by applying a little bit more energy to the built-in uh, um, uh, uh, valve, <laughs> and you can select it to be triode or pentode. More on that on a different amplifier video. <laughs> so I'm going to press play again, and we're going to start to mess around, and you will notice a difference right away. Did you hear the difference, Diego? You didn't. <laughs> no problem. There was a gigantic difference, girls and boys. Please, please take a look at the low end of your track, okay? The saturation, it's been applied in the following fashion. Here, we got a low cut. And I applied the low cut as a way to get rid of some of the mud. And that means that the rest of my tracks, I don't have to go that heavy on the filtering. Mm. Awesome. And also, you'll see that uh, the bass uh, kick drum sounds a little bit rounder and much more controlled, which is awesome. And it's a little bit warmer in nature. Now, I'm going to press play again, and I'm going to start to add a little bit more of the, the, the distortion on the higher end. Okay, here we go. Okay, Diego, this is going to be important. I'm okay. going to uh, be bypassing the plugin. Bypass means getting rid of the effect of the plugin on the track. Okay. And I want you to detect the difference. The difference is stupidly big. Mm. For those of you watching, girls and boys, whenever you see this knob on, that means that it's bypassed. Okay, girls and boys? And whenever it's, it's, uh, it's like this, uh, once again, let me confirm because this, they switch the controls. Yeah, it gotta be blue to be on, it gotta be off to be off. Makes total sense. Makes sense. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to how it sounds, okay, girls and boys? And uh, as I said, pay attention to the low end and how tight and less uh, aggressive and harsh the mm. highs sounds. Here we go. All right. Without. Wow. 
What do you think? Okay, I won't be going into the detail, the fine um, professional aspects. No. Nope. First of all, because I wouldn't be able to. Don't do but, it. <laughs> um, the way it makes me feel, it feels cleaner to, to a degree. Like yes. there is, it's like you just um, you got rid of some of the stuff that didn't need to be there. Yes. Like you, if I heard it without comparing, you wouldn't necessarily feel dirty or feel wrong. But especially when you put them side by side, you do feel like you got something that just feels right. Totally, totally. And actually, the reason why I ask Iago for his for his description is because that's that's actually the way you should be describing whenever you're working with music. Because if you're if you're describing the sound of your records, uh, applying technicalities, that means that probably is not achieving the emotional impact that it should. Thank you, Theo. Now. We added a nice uh, set of saturation. Uh, the technicalities of it is that we are compressing a tiny bit by applying saturation. And also we are, since we're dealing with two different bands, we are adding, applying the saturation on the highs and on the lows, giving us the results. Awesome plugin, awesome, awesome plugin. I'm gonna then add a second stage to our um, uh, uh, stereo bus, which is gonna be a compressor. But we're going to be using a really cool compressor, Girls and Boys, that I happen to uh, love, which is, let me find it, because uh, let's uh, look at this. <laughs> uh, let me find, here it is. We're going to be using the SSL Native 2 compressor. And Tiago, if you know a thing about me, <laughs> you know that I happen to be, uh, to like my SSL uh, yeah. consoles as much as I like my Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> So, I'm surprised a bit that you of, went for an SSL of, now. Of course, of okay. course. So, this compressor is renowned for being uh, part of the sound of many seminal records, including some Peter Gabriel and, and some other awesome artists that I happen to uh, admire. And, and I love the sound of this mixing desk. And since uh, I don't have this space facility to have a mix desk of such a nature right now, uh, we'll be using the digital version, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go to the mixer, and Tiago, uh, this is gonna be interesting because we're gonna be doing something cool. We're gonna cool. be having a plugin being controlled by my hands. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. You were expecting that, <laughs> right? And where the hell is my plugin? Here it is. So you'll take some voice. Uh, tell me if I am getting in the way of anything, Tiago. Uh, that's better. Good. So you'll take some voice that uh, over here we got the UF. Uh, UF1, UFC, whatever. I don't remember the, 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 the name of this thing. But this thing is controlling the plugin. Look at that. Look at this. Uh, uh, uh. Awesome. And this is actually, you might be thinking, that's just uh, a fashion item. In a way, it is not. Because this is going to be allowing me to do, um, be without spending too much time on this, the whole point of mixing is to get your ideas uh, to fruition as fast as possible. And if you find anything that allows you to do that, go for it. No matter how expensive or how uh, much head you're going to get out of your so-called friends. Now, we're going to start to apply some compression, but it's going to be super slight. Why? Because we don't want to squash the track. We just want to control the, the transients and make the track feel fuller. Here we go. The, the compressor is in now. Here we go. Okay, what just happened here? You saw me messing around with uh, with knobs uh, for a while, and there is a reason why I didn't uh, stop. When you're compressing, girls and boys, you gotta be quite, quite uh, focused on bypassing the plugin or the compressor, the hardware compressor, if you happen to be using one. Why? Because compressors, by default, uh, have the makeup gain. This thing over here, girls and boys, or on your screen, this guy. Uh, kind of set to unity. That means that uh, everything coming in will be increased in volume following whatever it's uh, it's set uh, on the threshold. This is there for a reason, Grossenbos. It's not to make your track louder. 
is to make anything that you apply to it's to make your compression to be at the same level as, as as the original track without the compression being engaged that's important for you to make a conscious decision now that i explain this we're going to come back to this uh to the track as well but i'm going to be bypassing the, the the plugin okay and one part of this thing being amazing is that you are able to actually bypass stuff from the from the control surface itself surface itself what am i expecting you to listen to Look at how self-contained the track feels. Our kick drum and our bass feels tighter, a tiny bit, but the difference is there. Also, you'll see that our cymbals, whenever they hit harder, they don't jump out of your speakers or your headphones. So Tiago, once again, I will need you to give your, uh, to, to give your uh, appreciation of this okay. once we're done. Here we go, girls and boys. Let's go. And again, sorry. When this light is in, that means that it's on. <laughs> when it's like this, it's off, okay? And we're gonna begin with it off. Here we go. Okay, I think the difference is quite clear, and I hope you got it, but mm, yeah. let, let's see what Tiago uh, actually got out of this. Okay, so the way it felt to me is like, you, it, at first, before you, you, you turned off the bypass, yes. it felt kind of a bit loose, because it didn't really change the sound as much as it exactly. changed the feel. Like, it, it went from a little bit loose and not, I wouldn't say all over the place, because that would be an exaggeration, yeah. but like, it went from that to being tighter and something that, okay, you understand where you're standing. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, yes, that's exactly the point of uh, compressor. And this concept, exactly what, what Diego uh, explained, it's applied to everything, every form of, compress of compressor. So I extremely recommend you to listen carefully, carefully to every single compressor that you have access to. Because believe it or not, they all sound differently and they behave differently. That's why you got your 1176s and your LA2As and your Optus and your Fed and blah, 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 blah. More on that on a different video or something, because that's a whole uh, different kind of, kind of worms. Now that we've got this out of the way, we're going to come back to our logic screen, our arrangement screen, and we're going to insert the last and final element to our stereo boss, which is going to come in the form of a EQ. And this EQ would be my uh hey, that's a great question uh we're gonna use the vax awesome awesome eq not an ssl not an ssl <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> now it's, it's because this this guy it's a passive equalizer and uh, ssl it's clean and this has a well i don't want to i don't want to divert that much <laughs> okay. just follow me okay this is a great stereo boss compressor uh, equalizer what we got here as usual is not failure or some boys we got uh, the stereo version or the stereo variant of the, uh, the plug-in version of the uh, Dangerous EQ uh, by the Bax EQ by the people, the fine people at Dangerous Music. And as it as the name implies, this thing is dangerous. A what? certain album by Michael Jackson. Because if uh, as soon as you move something around, you might or might not get anything. Okay. <laughs> and and you gotta be careful with that ask ask Eugene. So here we go. Here we got the low cut because this is actually if you have eagle eyes you will have detected that this looks like a like a like a pull tech because this is actually based on a pull tech design this is a passive equalizer and we got just a low cut uh, a frequency enhanced on the low end and and the same could be said about the highs and the high end in the cut aspect of this eq it also works as an MS uh, system, which it's useful, but in this application won't be needed. So I'm going to press play again, and this time around, you'll be, I'll be messing on the screen. Okay. So here we go. First, we're going to attack the lows, and then we're going to add some uh, air by applying some high-end energy to taste. Here we go.
we tackle first the low end and I assume that you saw the difference. Yep. Uh, you saw that I cranked up the output level of my uh, frequency knob and you, I can assure, I can imagine you cringing at your screen, but that's actually a good practice Garcia boys, because that allowed me to see uh, what kind of effect that particular band has uh, uh, on, this on, this, on this plugin. And that applies to equalizers uh, of the real life as well, in the real life as well. Life as well. Out of all of the frequencies that this guy has access to, I found that this guy over here, 84, was awesome. I want you to pay attention to the kick and the, and the bass again, but this time around you'll see that it's a little bit uh, punchier and ballsier, mm -hmm. not necessarily speaking clickier, mm -hmm. okay? Here we go. And again, red stands for engaged. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's not engaged anymore. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to begin without. Here we go. How would you describe the sound, Theo? Okay, so from heavy? what I, huh? heavier? No, I wouldn't say it have heavier to be honest, because like it, it, actually uh, you could feel the difference and you could feel where you were going towards even when you were doing the sweep in the yeah. beginning, yeah. because that way you can measure like the kind of the, the, the impact. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that you're you're getting out of those frequencies, and then you could could go from okay being too much too impacted to not impacted at yeah. all, and then uh, I saw you placing it just right. Yeah. And it, it, it just felt good because it stopped being in the way of other stuff as well. Yeah. Because like, let's say if you're too impacted by the, the low frequency, maybe you're not being moved enough by the rest. Exactly. So I think when you put, uh, where, where you put it, like on the right placement in the end, it just felt like the rest of the song made more sense. Totally. Like, and again, remember Gerson Boys, this is all about being subtle. Um, the, the devil is in the details. And uh, the reason why I said heavier, it's because it sounds a little bit more um, the foundation feels much more solid than before, yeah. and the bass and the kick feels uh, way, uh, with a little bit more 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 weight. Yeah, you know? but like that's not why having the sense of metal. Man, that yeah, that, that's what I mean. Because the, with that, the foundation being a little bit more solid, you can feel the rest mm. a little bit more present as well. Exactly. Because you usually have things where, well, in, in the place that they're supposed to be. One hundred percent. And we're gonna hit the final stage, girls and boys, and it's gonna be adding the high end. Uh, to the whole uh, mix. So here we go, girls and boys. We're gonna do the same, and I'm gonna sweep around to find the right frequency. And as, as a good practice, I'm gonna insert a low, a high cut already. Here we go. Okay, what happened here? As soon as I started to mess around with the high end, we are bringing up the attack of the kick, which is fantastic. This is helping me. Uh, uh, this will be extremely helpful once we start to mix the, the rest of the song uh, on an individual basis, because now our kick is already bolsier mm -hmm. and clickier. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to press play and we're going to be bringing in and out the equalizer. Now we're, you will see a gigantic difference because we're affecting both the high and the lows without I don't think that I have to explain what happened. No, no, this time around, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna just decrease a little bit our output because again, we have to make sure that we're matching the levels. Otherwise we can be fooled by volume. And uh, since this time around, the difference in volume is basically non-existent. 
uh, we don't have to uh, review this track again. Now it's time to have some extreme fun and cringe at the same time. We're gonna listen to our uh, work so far and we're gonna put it, put it against, sorry girls and boys, to our rough mix. So you are familiar with this guy. So blue stands uh, for uh, not because your baby left you, uh, but it's blue because uh, it's a mix that we're working on and orange stands for uh, the rough. Here we go. From the top, I remember we are already, we applied all sorts of, uh, we only did a proper balancing volume and just the equalization and a, a fusion and against honor kick. Here we go, but nothing extreme. Okay, girls and boys, of course, that you saw us discussing, and it's because we were exchanging uh, our perception of the track, and the difference is not big. It's a stupid big. It's extremely different, even though we haven't done technically anything on the tracks. Mm. Again, it's just a quick uh, balance in volume for every single instrument that is part of this track, and an intelligent, yet subtle mm. application of stereo bus processing. Now, Tiago, what do you think? All right. Uh, I know that the, the fine tuning work is still Ooh, ahead of us. We are way ahead. But look, it, it for me the change from the the, the rough version to, to the the one that we got now, it, it's from like a several elements thrown together yeah. to a song. Yeah. You know, like they now make sense as yes. a, as a, as one single okay. entity. Exactly. You know? Yes, I get you. Yeah, I get you. And and look, it's not because the the kick drum sound is completely different. It's about how well con self-contained the low end sounds yeah. and how expansive, thanks to this, thanks to the application of the yeah. compression. Now we got a much more uh, the stereo field feels bigger. Yeah, don't it, you think? In, even in the very beginning of the track, when, on the first uh, change of the yes. AB that you, you made, even before the, the kick came in, yes. you could already feel like in the in the previous version, yes. you're not being moved at all by the low end to okay, this feels good. Exactly, you know? and also the high end of the piano was sweeter. Yeah, I think a little bit yeah. more silky sounding. If I yeah, a little bit brighter. You, you could hear it better, That's first of all. <laughs> you yep. could get it. And it, it just felt right. Yeah. So, girls and boys, uh, that, that is bringing us to the final step of this uh, hopefully uh, successful journey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if, you lo if you got any question, as usual, leave it on the comment section down below because we're about to uh, finish this live stream. 
If you want to support this channel, the best way to do it is by listening to our music on Apple Music or Spotify. And also, uh, follow us on social media, such as Instagram, because that's the best way for us to get in touch with you in a much more personal basis. Again, girls and boys, I cannot say thank you enough. And as uh, every single time that I meet you, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that I will see you, and I will see you when we see you.